It's our anniversary. There we go. Damn. Kimmy on Woozy. You was waiting on me, nigga? You wasn't here in no time. It's just you and I. So since it's just you and I, I need you to share this live stream to your social media platforms, will you? I really like that. He said the Knicks just won. The Lakers won last night in double overtime against a contender. Nigga Austin Reeves was playing like them white boys from Princeton back in the 90s. Damn, why y'all booking me? Just got here. Excuse me, peace. He said we coming. I don't want to be in here crunching, but I'm eating apple slices. Y'all got to excuse me. I said, the playoffs going to be interesting. Yes, they are. I'm looking forward to them. Especially if my Lakers is involved. He said, the Lakers won tonight, too. We done won five straight. Eight out of, eight out of the last ten, I believe. They do their thing when LeBron ain't out there. I don't like the perception of that, but it's the truth. They do. Gentlemen's quarter. I think we will have to play Golden State sometime in the first or second round. They can't fuck with us. The seaweed knit is fire. I got approached by all types of women because of the knittage. I sell nothing but hoe catches. <laughs> That's the code word for the knittage. Ho catch us. You know what I mean? He said, next I'll roll up a bat wood. Braun play no defense and he take away from others' games. They ain't gonna make the playoffs. Oh, y'all hating already. God damn. Came in here to kick it. He said, what's the topic? Any more pilfering going on? All pilfering will cease. Anybody that's done any pilfering with, with, you know, with me present, got the whistle blew on him. Like Mano when he stole that chain from Troy Al. We ain't gonna have no pilfering, none at all. If y'all wanna go into that, I'd love to do it with you. <laughs> the knitage is a head turner. Yeah, man, you snap next. They conversation pieces, man, make you look real interested in this shit. They want to go into a dialogue with you. You know what I'm saying? Trey Bucks, what up? Excuse me. He said the war horns. I ain't going to hit the chant tonight. He said, you didn't speak on King Odie on a podcast. I might do a little bit of that tonight. Depends on how I feel in the next couple of minutes. Y'all was looking forward to that, huh? I might save it for the podcast. I might. Draymond. Draymond got suspended again tonight or ejected again. He keep fucking around, man. For some reason, he feel that that's how he got to approach the game and shit. Everybody that did it like that, they dealt with him. Dennis Rodman, they dealt with him. Rasheed Wallace, they dealt with him. You don't want to get that reputation. A friend around, look at the knitage. This is called eggplant. I don't know if this is on the site currently, but. My man said, mystery mix, now later knit. Hit the thumbs up, the like button, the top, the top like button. I mean, the top notification bell, so you get a um, notification whenever I'm on. He said, they jokes that they give him a max extension. What's your opinion on Ice Cube offering Caitlin Clark $5 million to play in the Big Three? Great investment. Cube is brilliant. If she comes to play in the Big Three, 
all of her people gonna come to watch. When I mean what I mean by all of her people, all of her fans, all of her white fans, all of her uh, fans from the University of Iowa, they all gonna tune in. That that'd be a good. She should do that. I would. They don't make much money in the WNBA, so he probably trumped any contract that she could receive. He said, mystery mixed with the new Morants. Make sure you send me a picture, man, at the Fashion Bomb page or at I am Gully TV or tweet it to me. Gully TV one. That's 50's main motivation for Diddy Haters, his baby mama in the lawsuit. Hmm. She will make more money with Ice Cube than the WNBA. I agree. I agree. I agree. So, people. What's going on? I ain't going to be here long. I just wanted to tap in before I retreat to the Roku and watch me some classic movies. Yes, Fraze, what's up? He said, they is hole catchers, though. I had like five females compliment and ask where I got them from. They thorough, period. A few niggas asked about it. The most electrifying fashion accessory in the world today. Gentlemen's quarter, half a mil. Glad dribble dog got check tied for plagiarism. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. There will be no pilfering of half a mil's legacy or his music. Nobody pulled that stunt in 30 years. Everybody know half a mil is like a precious a precious artifact. He's a rare diamond in the crown of hip hop. And um, nobody has tried that. Nobody, nobody tried that. Nobody felt that they could wear those shoes or anything of that nature. And his family, his son, he happens to follow me on Instagram. So, uh, you know, I ain't having it. You know, I'm not having it. Not only that, I don't fucking like Taj. So he better be on his best fucking behavior. Better be on his best behavior. And let me explain something to y'all, right? There's a difference between what Jay-Z did with Biggie's verses and shit like that and what Taj did. Taj used a great portion of a half a mil verse for a hook. According to Max B, the nigga that makes the hook is the nigga who essentially makes the song everybody else just contributes contributes a verse unless you pay for that you know like when jay-z used nas i'm out for presidents to represent me i'm pretty sure he had to compensate nas on some level for that right that's not paying homage taking a motherfucker's whole fucking verse and, and using it for a hook that's not paying homage that's stealing and um there's a certain procedure that you have to pursue if you want to do that type of theft. You got to pay publishing and shit like that. You do. You have to compensate his family. Nobody wants to hear this little fuckboy narrative that y'all come up with. He's paying homage. No, he not. If you're paying homage to a deceased artist, pay his family. That's how you... That's how you... uh. Pay homage to somebody. Compensate his family. For the art that you stolen. That's what you do. And another thing. He told a lie. To many people. Like he had a relationship with half a mil. Or he knew half a mil. You see that? That says low life. Low life. MGV, that's Marcus Garvey Village. SJP, that's St. John's Place, 1988. That's where the lowlights was launched at. They sent me this. One of the lowlights sent me this. Half a mil was a highly respected lowlife, and a lot of the lowlifes, his friends from Brooklyn, they was in the comments. And they said, 
Taj wasn't never around us. That nigga wasn't never around us. <laughs> so stop fucking lying. See, these are the credentials and shit. You dig? Can't be lying, man. It's easy to bust a motherfucker. Look. That's a person. By Rack Low. You see that? That's one of the low lies. Them niggas are still present in their own line. I, inter I interviewed about three of them. Rudy Lowe, who declined to speak on this situation for whatever reason. Um, Thurston Howe and G. George. You know what I'm saying? And um, can't be stealing, man. Don't be stealing, man. Stealing is not cool. This nigga seems to have a problem with stealing and shit. You feel me? This nigga seems to have a problem with stealing. His sin, his ultimate sin was stealing from one of my, not one of my, my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? My favorite rapper. Don't fucking try it. Don't even fucking try it, pimp. And don't fucking lie on the nigga name or his legacy while he's deceased talking about you knew him and all of that. That's weird shit. This nigga is often doing weird shit. Y'all can y'all going to continue to see flaws in his character because this is who he is and shit. This is who he is. So I happen to be appalled at it. So I was the first to say I was the only one to say something again. That's fun. that's funny. I'm 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 starting to see that's a natural occur occurrence that I'm often the only one that stands for what's right online. Everybody else, dick riders, dick riders, yeah. Like nobody said anything about Larry Davis being disrespected. What I don't understand and what I won't accept is anybody acting masculine from New York City. Don't try to act masculine with me. Because y'all didn't act masculine with Larry Davis. I mean, for the Larry Davis situation. When Blue Boy was on the street, y'all wanted to take pictures with him and shit like that. That's not masculinity and shit. That's sucker shit. It blew y'all cover. So all that goofy shit, you know, you dick ride niggas talking in my comments. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't believe you. I know that you're weak. You know what I'm saying? I know that you're fucking weak. Like that dick rod nigga, what is the young Amsterdam? Hopped in my comments talking about, yo, he knew half a mil. Them low life niggas, Unique Loren and them, they corrected him. No, he wasn't around us, pimp. Mind your fucking business, groupie. So, don't try any masculine gestures with me. I don't believe you. Nobody with any masculinity would allow another black man of Larry Davis's magnitude to be disrespected and not say anything. I was the only one that said anything. Once that happened, I knew that you niggas is all pussycats. Y'all scared of a 60-year-old motherfucker with a knife. Quite weird. Quite weird. But I don't believe nothing that you niggas are saying. I've seen it, um, nigga, a lot of niggas chose to make fake pages and say little slick shit in my comments. Eat a dick. I said it. And I meant it. Eat a dick. If you feel that you want to do something, go to the next step. You know what I'm saying? But uh, there, will, there will be no theft of half a mil's intellectual property without compensating the state. Period. He said, what happened, big bro? Don't be calling niggas big bro fam. Don't do that. Um, I'm good with big brother dribble almighty. <laughs> but the big bro thing, because big brother dribble almighty, that's my name. But don't be calling random niggas big bro, my nigga. Don't be doing that. Everybody don't deserve that type of reverence and shit. You know what I'm saying? You can hit me with a Jamil. <laughs> hit me with a Jamil. I'm great with that. Gully TV or Big Brother Dribble Almighty because that's my name, but don't be just calling niggas Big Bro and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all good, my nigga. Y'all make sure y'all like this video. Come in here to kick it with y'all for a minute.
That's the name of this video, Can I Kick It? It's a lot of fraudulent shit going on online. I'm not going to be a participant in it. I'm not at all. That shit that happened with half a mil. I have a voice in this hip hop culture. I have a major league voice in this hip hop culture. I'm checking shit like that. There will be no biting. And you niggas who are unsigned, you niggas who are on the rise, y'all the ones that should, should support me in this action because you will be the next motherfucker that they steal something from. They like stealing shit from little niggas, people who don't have a big following and shit, and not much political power, and dead niggas. You know what I'm saying? A motherfucker run off with some shit that you did. I'll blow the whistle. I will. You ask Big Ooh. You ask Big Ooh. Big Ooh had a song called Keys Open Doors. And it was a dope song. It got a music video and everything. The next time I seen and heard this song, Fat Joe was rapping it. I said, that's Big Ooh's song. I didn't kick up a bunch of dust because... Big Ood, he didn't seem to be, um, I don't know, maybe they had a business arrangement or something like that. But I seen and heard, and I knew that that shit wasn't right. But I just want y'all to know, there will be policing of biting. Shark biters will not be tolerated at all. Come up with some live shit on your own. Get off niggas' dick. Stop eating niggas' dick. You know what I'm saying? If you if you if you if you feel that you uh God God has original qualities, you feel me? You should be able to create something from nothing because you're gifted in black. Stop trying to cut corners and all of that. What happens is the um the person who actually created something will be forgotten and the person that stole it will be acknowledged for it. Kinda like Elvis Presley. They try to call him, don't they call him the godfather of rock and roll or some shit like that? When it's really Little Richard. So you need people to police these things. There's thefts. And that's what fucking Taj Mahal is, is a fucking thief. So, be original. Yeah, like Ghostface Killer said. Feel me? Ba boom, boom, boom. He said, keys open, doors is fire. Who the first person you heard with that song? Big Oof from New Jersey. It was his song. Can we collab on the... I'm lost. You got to put some commas in that. If you want me to market and promote your um, product, I'm with that. Collaborations? No. No. Don't collab with me. Collab with the niggas you grew up with. That's the right thing to do. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. Think First says, recently got my third PA net. Salute. You got a PO box. Um, you can hit me up on um, Instagram at IamGullyTV underscore or Twitter. And I'll give you the information that you need. He said, wasn't Joe still in pun shit? Probably so. We not going to have it. We not going to have it. Will black women turn on Ice Cube if he doesn't offer An Angel Reese the same $5 million offer? Angel Reese don't have the same skill set as Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese plays around the rim. Angel Reese got nothing coming playing around the rim amongst men. She ain't got none, none coming playing uh, around the rim um, amongst men in a three-on-three -three league. Caitlin Clark, she she can boogie a little bit. She can shoot from outside and shit like that. You know, if she can run around a screen, somebody set a pick. She can shoot that long ball and all of that. But Ice Cube's Ice Ice Cube's a great businessman. People gotta respect his dribble. He ain't steered us wrong yet. He hasn't. Doom doom doom. He said, what kind of Joe Dumars? That's Louisiana Lafayette. That's his college team. Good evening, everybody. 
I hope y'all enjoyed my um my last podcast, episode 39 from the Dribble Podcast, available on all streaming sites. I wanted to break down the um the whole history of fraudulent activity from Taj Mahal. He said Juju Watkins can. She can. She can. And that's a good idea to make it um the 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 big three make it a unisex situation because then you got the female fans tuning in. They got something to look at. Ba boom, boom, boom. Am I the only one that, oh, you missed that. Think Caitlyn Jenner Clark is, a, oh my gosh. Subscribe to the channel. I did the Street Fighter art bar log. Um, it's good. Always trying to make sure the inspiration gets credit. I can make sure you get all your credit. Um, if you created a nice piece of art, you're a curator. I can tell the world about you, but I don't choose to have no, I don't choose to do any collaborations or nothing like that. Not now anyway. And you know, but boom, boom, boom. I tell you what though, if you're good at art, I'll buy something. I'll buy a piece from you, but I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. So if you got something that you want to sell me, I'm more than interested. He said, it's good. I'm more than interested in looking at what you have because, like I said, I'll buy it. You know what I mean? We don't have to collab. I can become a client. I can spend money with you. That's better. How about that? He said, don't tell her bone structure don't look suspicious. Shh. Boom, 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 boom. Make sure you follow me on IG and we can, you know, get you know, get together and shit, man. But I'm I'm definitely interested in what you got. You know what I'm saying? You might be a Picasso situation. I might be missing out on something, but I want one hundred percent creative control of my situation. Peace to a lost five percent nation of gods and earths. Half never gets the credit he deserves because Million is a classic. That's my shit. Remember that year he had a tape in a Sony box on a Panasonic? That's my shit. He my favorite rapper. That's why a nigga sent me that um that song that Taj did. Niggas thought that shit was funny. They said, man, you gotta listen to this shit here. Other rappers know. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be a victim of theft if that's the case. Let's just have a free-for-all. Go take what you want from Tupac and make you a song. Go take what you want from Big L, Biggie, make you a song and call it paying homage, but you really fucking stealing. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. He said, did he done it or what? I told y'all my previous telecasts and shit. I grew up on Diddy, Diddy's music and shit like that. I'm a fan of Puff. I went to Revo for three years, learned a lot, met a lot of people, had a wonderful time. I'm not elated that the nigga in trouble. He's in trouble. Um, I listened to, it's a, it's, a, it's a YouTube channel called Crime and Law, and they filled in all the blanks. That, that situation with the kid, Little Rod, and Cuba Gooden Jr., oh my God, man, that's really, it's really messy. <laughs> Cuba Gooden Jr. They don't call him Cuba. They call him Cuba. <laughs> they call him Cuba. They got pictures. It's very, it's the dark side, man. He said he's not innocent, but he's not guilty. Until he's proven to be guilty, he's innocent. That's what. You know, that's what they say in the United States court of law. You're innocent until proven guilty. So you ain't going to get no puff bashing from me and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? The nigga Freaky, he ain't the first nigga that came along that was Freaky. It's been a whole bunch of freak motherfuckers, man. Think it was a politician. No, no. Marv Albert from the NBA. Marv Albert. I don't know if he's still around the NBA or anything like that, but he used to 
be a commentator for the Knicks. Whenever Latrell scored, he used to say, yes. Or John Starks, yes. That was a, in the early 90s. He bit a bitch. He was freaking with a bitch and got the biting her and shit like that. And they let him back in. They let him. He came back to the NBA after that. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? People seem like they forgot about old Marv and shit. Like they just slept that. They swept that under the rug. And the NBA was like, man, it's cool and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, they said Marv had panties on his head. Yeah, a bunch of freaky shit. So, this ain't the first, man. You got to keep your... Keep video cameras and shit out of your bed. <laughs> For real. He said he's not the only one at them freak offs. He said Messy Marv. He got caught wearing lingerie and kinky with Dominatrix. Oscar De La Hoya is another freak. My man said, I don't I'm not familiar with Playboy Cardi's body of music. He said, Mark Curry gave you big flowers this AM. Flowers die. <laughs> flowers die. I can't invest Mark Curry's flowers. I can't. Mark Curry took me, Mark did some funny shit, man, and took my rhythm over there to fucking uh, art of dialogue. He should give me flowers or try to give me. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but I shot his music videos. He never had any music videos. His whole time on Bad Boy, he never had any solo music videos. The only music video he ever appeared in was Bad Boy for Life. You know what I'm saying? But, man, fuck your flowers, nigga. You can send me a check or go to the realdribble.com and, you know what I'm saying, go on a shopping spree or something like that. But... I actually heard Mark's name on that Crime and Law YouTube channel. He said he knew he was wrong. Yeah, whatever. You know, I'm a shithead. I get shitted on all the time and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I, I come to understand this. You dig? And um, like I told Rome Streets, Rome Streets hit me up like, yo, my man. You know, you, I said, you're not my man, pimp. I ain't heard from you in like two years and shit. You don't even talk to me. What the fuck you mean, my man? You're not my man. You know what I'm saying? You're not my man. You know, um, like I told him, though, everything that I'm supposed to have in life, God gave me two of them. So I'm good with that, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I be cool with some people being removed from the cipher and shit. Some, I only got two eyes, you know what I mean? I can't watch everybody and shit. God be looking out for me and shit. You know what I'm saying? And he'll... He'll separate me because I'm chosen. He'll separate me from any bad elements. So, you know, when the separation come, when God get to cutting niggas up out the picture, let him do his work. Don't question it. You know what I'm saying? When they do the they little monkey shit, tell them, all right, I'll holla at you, pimp. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at. Johnny McCrant, what's up, pimp? Luca ain't getting shit. They starting to critique his basketball skill set. He don't do much besides hold the ball for 20-some seconds or some shit like that. He said, once you cross the bridge, stay there. Yeah, you cross the bridge on me. You're going to an island. You should know that. You're going to an island. He don't play no D. He don't do nothing besides dribble for 15 minutes and do a bunch of shit till we can get a shot off. If the game is on the line, he shouldn't have the ball. He take too long to boogie. I would give it to Kyrie. You see what he do with either hand. Gully, thoughts on the situation with gambling on the NBA? My cash app is dollar sign gully TV. Um, gambling on the NBA. The fact that niggas can gamble in the confines of their home on a cell phone, you can pick up a phone and make you a couple bets. You can't tell me that these NBA niggas not betting on their cell phone shit on certain nights. All my homies be betting. 
What the fuck is that? I can't remember the name of the app, but some of my homies got real bet real problems with that shit. Like betting on games and shit like that. What's FanDuel? These different, you know, you can bet at home and shit. They doing it. They are. Yep, FanDuel. MGM Grand app. Sleeper app. Niggas betting on shit. So, it's definitely going to affect the game. DraftKings, prize picks. Listen to, all, listen to all, these, all of these sites that you can bet on. And these dudes is young, man. These dudes is young. They figure they could place a bet and go out there and, you know, control the game. You know they gambling on himself, he said. Diddy sitting back, drinking, kicking his feet up. He better enjoy his um his his freedom, his liberty out here because it it is it possibly could change soon and shit. I don't know how much internal strength inst internal strength he has. I just hope that he don't hang up and do no funny shit like that. Cause everybody not cut out to go to jail and shit. It's going from one extreme to another. You used to eating, you know, the finest food, sleeping in the finest hotels, the finest homes. You sleeping on sheets, the finest sheets, washing your face with the finest towels. From that to fucking prison and shit. Some niggas can't take that transition. This is truthful. I done seen niggas just really rugged hang up and I didn't seen it. I didn't seen niggas just really, really like that, you know, rugged, reach the end of their rope and be like, man, I can't do it no more and go on and hang up or, you know, bust, you know, blow their head off and shit like that. So, doom, doom. Kel said he's coming home. I don't know what to say, man, about niggas who got, you know, talent, companies, resources, going to jail for the sex sex shit. Like, for real. Mark said he don't think Diddy is built for it due to his ego. Diddy ain't never been in no handcuffs all like that, probably except for that, that situation that happened with J-Lo. J J-Lo was in that case, too. Showing love, what's your favorite big song? I always liked it, um, You Can't Stop the Rain with Shaq. That's a standout Biggie song to me. That I, I love that song. I actually interviewed the guy who produced it. His name is Chris Large. It's on his channel, the making of You Can't Stop the Rain with Biggie and Shaq. That's always been my shit. He killed Biggie, killed that shit. <laughs> he killed that shit. <laughs> We deep with killers about billion dollar figures. <laughs> cream lizards, cream coogees. I do my duties as long as they fly as me and high as me. That's my shit. Did you see Mark Curry interview with Vlad on Piers Morgan? Nah, man, I don't. I don't tune in to Mark, man. I don't want to hear nothing that nigga got to say. I don't tune in. His name is in that case though. J Lo too. They uh. If somebody got killed in that club, they would try to be put they would be trying to put J Lo in prison for accessory to murder. They saying J Lo carried that pistol, I think it was a 45 caliber or a 40 caliber. She took the pistol in that fucking in that club that night. I don't know whether she had it in her purse, whatever. They not gonna they, security not patting her down. You know what I'm saying? So they saying that she definitely, her name is, she, she might be called to testify. She brought the pistol in the club. You know what I mean? That's funny. You telling this to the victims now, they turn around and sue her ass right now too. He said, Corey Guns wrote for Shaq. No, he didn't. Corey Guns was a baby when that song was out. That was probably... His father, you you probably confusing him with uh, Peter Guns.
He said, that case is over. It's funny, we didn't hear nothing about that. Sean took the fall. I ain't doing 10 years for no fucking body, man. 10 years for a million dollars? No. I ain't going to fucking jail, man, for no money. Not for no fucking money. No. I'd do 24 hours for some money. Anything over 24 hours, you can keep that, Jack. Sean did t 10 years, sacrificed his career, came out. His voice wasn't the same. He, he couldn't rap no more. The end. And his compensation was probably a million dollars. You know how much money he would have made if he was on the street for that 10 years? Mm. Fuck that. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't want to go. I'm I, No. I'm not cut for jail. When I was younger and shit, I, I was a little bit more um, aggressive, rebellious, misguided, impatient, irrational. I can give you all the reasons why I probably ended up in jail, but that ain't me no more. Fuck that. What are the chances that Diddy gives up the bigger fish in exchange for lesser time? Who is the bigger fish? They seem to be focusing on him and Cuba Gooden right now. Oh, it was a prince. Prince something. Somebody for some royalties involved with that shit, too. Can't get time back, man. Niggas be like, man, I do that time. Give me this much money. Man, you crazy as hell. Prince Harry. Fuck that. I, I no. Anybody that say they accept money to go to jail ain't been to jail before. It's cold as a motherfucker in jail, man. They don't tell you all the details. Jail is cold in the... F jail is cold, man. It be cold as fuck in jail, man. Like, you see them motherfucking pictures of niggas be in jail with them sweatsuits on and shit like that? That's because it's fucking freezing in there year round. That's the only way you keep Jack Frost up out your ass. They be having the fucking air blowing and shit like that. Motherfuckers be walking around with towels on their head tied. That All of that, that's not a fashion statement. That's to keep pneumonia off your ass. For real. Niggas be putting shit in a vent trying to keep the air from blowing. Like You got no control over that shit. Gully salute, I got the Rollo joints. What's the difference than the other, other ones? The Rollo, you can see the difference. It's a lot thicker, a lot more dynamic and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I actually created these for ballers. I created these for ballers. They had a hat in Chicago that all the hustlers used to wear called a Briars hat, AKA the Buck 50. They had snakeskin on the brim and diamonds and rhinestones and all type of fly shit but it was called the buck 50 hat this is the new briars joint right here the rollo go to my website and get you one i'm a correctional officer it's really hell up in there man it's cold as a motherfucker man it is i used to i didn't even you i man if i wasn't in the yard or something like that I didn't even come out my cell. I used to tell my celly and shit, man. Like, I'm telling you, man. Like, you're moving in here. You need to understand this is my cell and shit. Like, I'm not chumping you or nothing like that. But I was here first. Therefore, this is my cell. If you don't like it, you probably should move in with somebody else. But we going to do this time my way up in here. You know what I mean? Like, that vent going to stay fucking closed and shit like that. <laughs> you got to lay down the laws and shit, man. That vent gonna stay fucking closed. Like, ain't no shitting in here, period, man. I don't give a fuck what go down. Don't shit in this cell, man. Like, I'm gonna allocate certain time for when you be in here by yourself. You could take care of all of that by yourself. If you think you about to get on the toilet with me in the cell with you, man, you might as well put your hands up right now. We might as well rip right now. So you understand that I'm serious about it. Boom, boom.
the one you got on your head. This is called Eggplant. It's probably some on the website still. I know I was kind of about to be out of these joints. That tickle, y'all, huh? <laughs> he said, not in New York State prison shit feel like the projects. They got jails like that. Don't nobody want to be doing time like that. All that fucking noise and shit like that. Like, I'm, I'm in my cell studying and, you know, writing down notes, preparing to get back to the streets. I'm, it was like college to me. He said, we used to put wet toilet paper in the vents. Exactly, all of that. I'm about to put all types of shit in this vent. And um, some niggas, you, like, they like air blowing in the cell. That's your thing and shit. You can't live in here, period. He said, I'm glad them days is over with. Me too. Me too. It, it, it's just something that I can't, I can't even wrap my mind around doing no shit like that. For real. I just seen a lot of gangsters fold down there in them Georgia prisons. Them Georgia prisons is different from the prisons in the north. Them Georgia prisons, man, they got they got too much blade action going down there. I believe they still be, yeah, they be raping niggas and shitting them down south jails. They on they they got heavy sausage partying and shit down there. They got documentaries about the rapes and the, they got some shit going on in down south jails. <laughs> straight up, straight up. They got shit going on in them southern jails, man, that don't happen in the north, man. For real. Subscribe to the channel while you're here. Hit the bell so you get the notifications. I, I made a, I did a live stream, um, not a live stream, a, a, a podcast episode about Taj Mahal calls himself Great God. He run around with a fucking mask on his face so people can't see him. The niggas that he stole from, that mask is so niggas don't come to his shows wherever he at with a fly, wherever his name is on a flyer. If he got a mask on his face, he can go there in peace. Motherfuckers that he stole from, they won't show up and split his fucking head open. So he calls himself Great God. You ain't God, nigga. Stealing from motherfuckers. Gods don't steal. And they really don't steal from black people. Weird ass nigga. Jail in the South is like a plantation. Subscribe to the channel. I stand for what's right. I met half a mil's son and his family, some of his family members on Instagram, they sent me a basketball jersey, a half a male basketball jersey. They know I'm a big fan of them. If you follow me on IG, a lot of my reels, I, I use half a male's music often. So that's why that, that news uh, was brought to me that he was still in that song. The fact that he said that he had a relationship with half a male, that's sickness, that's sickness. That's twist. That's some twisted shit. Didn't know the man, period. That's like me telling y'all I knew Tupac or Biggie Smalls or some shit. Yeah, I went to their shows. I might have even been in a club with them niggas at the same time. I don't know no fucking Tupac and no Biggie Smalls and shit like that. Niggas be making up lies after motherfuckers dead. Yeah, Stack Bundles was my man. Chinks was my man. It's, niggas be doing weird shit like that. Starting to notice that a lot of dudes, they don't care about being ethical or being um, a sophisticated, intelligent man. A lot of these niggas want to be rappers. They do. They do. And if they can't be a rapper, they want to be close to a rapper and shit. And will do anything to accomplish this. You know what I'm saying? Including looking the other way when somebody doing some bullshit. If anybody was supposed to be offended by what happened to half a mil with that Taj Mahal shit, the Brooklyn niggas should have been in the uproar. They should have. But some niggas chose to say, not say anything like Rudy Lowe. That told me a lot about him. But I wasn't supposed to be surprised. You niggas didn't say nothing when Blue Boy was disrespecting Larry Davis. None of y'all. Not one. 
No black pride. I don't know Larry Davis, never met him. I met Larima, Larima Davis. She follows me on Instagram. I didn't even know she was following me. That's his daughter. She thanked me for standing up for him. She did. A lot of these niggas looked the other way. Creeps. He said, every man for himself. Oh, I got to add this, right? Do not ever, ever confuse a fan with a friend. It's a difference. Promise you. Don't ever think that. Don't ever think that. Do not confuse a fan with a friend. Fans is not your friend. Fans are very fickle, straight up. And um, they move with no integrity. A lot of these niggas move with no integrity. I'm starting to see that. It's disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. And um, I'm cool being in a class by myself. I ain't like you niggas and shit. And I'm starting not to like you niggas. Because I'm seeing a lot more, a lot more of y'all flaws and shit. So... He said we were supposed to cancel Blue Boy. I canceled his motherfucking ass. This motherfucker got on Vlad TV and said Larry Davis was squirming around on the ground like a motherfucking roach. I was mad as a motherfucker. Who the fuck you think you talking to, nigga? I seem to be the only one offended. These dick ride niggas look the other way. Golly, thoughts on 50 cents being being a sex worker for Diddy. Bitch is trying to pay her bills. 50 shouldn't be concerned. Hey. Mm, mm. Follow me on Twitter. At Gully TV1. I don't know why they changed that platform name to X. Ain't nobody ever gonna call that shit X. That shit Twitter for life. It is. Gentlemen's Quarter, thank you. I was mad too. Ain't he back in jail for a body? Nah, nigga went back to jail because he probably caused a homosexual or a dope fiend. Niggas, what, nigga wasn't fit to be in a fucking society anyway. He killed the winter jail and killed motherfuckers in jail. How the fuck do you parole a motherfucker like that? I'll tell you how. He killed Larry Davis. That was his compensation for killing Larry Davis. This type of motherfucker shouldn't be allowed in society, period. This motherfucker got in society, and niggas took pictures with him. Niggas took pictures with him. Don't you know if a black man killed a Puerto Rican? Ain't no Ricans gonna be running around taking no fucking pictures with him. They not, period. These niggas got no pride. Got no pride. Terrible. It's about upbringing and shit. Not only that, a lot of these niggas smoking crack. A lot of these older niggas, ex-crackheads and shit. It don't matter if you smoke it in a blunt, you smoke it in a glass. He's a fucking smoker. A lot of these niggas was crackheads and shit like that. Like, you you just pay attention. Just check out their character and shit. A lot of these niggas, they probably cleaned up now. A lot of people cleaned up now. And even our relatives, they were smoking a pipe. But the way niggas smoke weed now, like, you'll go to a party and it'd be weed on the table. Motherfuckers sitting at the table rolling up. The niggas above me, the generation above me, they parties. You go in the party and them niggas got rocks on the fucking table and shit and cocaine sniffing it and smoking the fucking pipe. You feel me? And no matter what, who they are today, excuse me, they going to still be junkies and shit. They going to have junkie principles, junkie morals. You know what I'm saying? They've been broken. They've been broken men. So it don't matter who you is today, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's the truth. So. I'm not surprised at anything that these niggas be doing. I'm not. Because I know their nature. I know the truth. Especially if they have a certain demographic. Niggas older than me was fucking boys in jail too. 
It was regular. It was regular. That was like a part of their regular reality and shit. Like a lot of these niggas fucking boys in jail. They was. When I got to the prison system, I was 18 or 19. That shit has just started like going away. Like the, the, the new young niggas wasn't with that shit on no level and shit. And them older niggas, they started to hide it and shit like that. But a lot of these niggas fucking boys and shit. Like in the 80s, that was some regular, the early 80s, late 70s and shit. That was some regular shit for them niggas. Real talk. Real talk. So I don't give a fuck about how much you can recite supreme mathematics to 120. You know how to recite ayats from the Quran and shit. That shit don't mean nothing. If you was fucking boys and smoking crack. A lot of these niggas, that's what their background consists of. So yeah, they had the boys hold their pockets and trade them for packs of cigarettes and shit. All facts. He said Mike Tyson was rocking with Blue Boy. <laughs> Nobody ever said Mike Tyson was ethical. Nobody ever said Mike Tyson was intelligent until he came from prison. Before that, I interviewed niggas that ran with Mike Tyson, was around Mike Tyson and shit. Mike Tyson caused a motherfucker to get killed outside the fucking Apollo, outside the Apollo Theater. He grabbed a nigga, a, a, a female ass, and her nigga was like that. He was a drug kingpin or a killer or some shit. Make a long story short, short gunplay had to erupt behind this incident. And a guy got killed outside the fucking Apollo or running down the street from this shootout because of Mike negligence. Yeah. And I'm probably sure he he's of that generation. He was fucking boys. So just because he's who he is and shit. I mean, look at him now. He's making a mockery of his legacy by fucking with this nigga Jake Paul. Ain't that his name? So... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it gully 100% of the time, yo. I don't give a fuck, period. Like, I stand for what's right. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is and shit. He says, zip with the drip rock with Blue Boy. That's his business. That's his business. New York blacks be letting Spanish and white people call them niggas with no repercussions. Same with Cali and Mexicans. Gangster love, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I got to get up out of here, man. I'm going to retire to my Roku. What's your opinion on the Passport Brothers? I don't know who that is. I heard their name before, man. My passport stamped the fuck up, too. I done been all in Europe and Paris and London and Sweden and shit like that. So, hey, man, you too can be a passport brother. Shout out to the Lakers getting busy, man. Whenever the Lakers are doing good, I'm in a good, I'm in a good place. So, um, I'm out of here, man. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Taj, you better be on your best fucking behavior. If I see you do anything, I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass, just like my just like my son and Mano. You on a lifetime shit list, straight up, forever, my nigga. And uh, that's what it is. It's in the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Be careful who you offend, and that's something that you should never forget. Peace.